The political and economic elite in China have long been aware of the crucial role that water plays in maintaining the country's economy. Today's challenges for effective water management are not dissimilar to those that were faced in the past. The water supply across the entirety of China is currently going through a difficult period of acute shortages, which has resulted in a number of issues. There is a significant disparity in the distribution of China's water resources due to the country's topography. For example, the wet south of China has four times the water availability per person as the arid north. Throughout its history, China has responded to the problem of water scarcity by constructing physical transfers of water in order to enhance supplies. As the sense of urgency around the situation intensified, the technocrats in China embarked on more audacious attempts to boost supply. The last two and a half decades have been dominated by efforts to bring long-distance water transportation projects to dry northern towns. Mao Zedong was the creative force behind the South to North Water Diversion Project, which is often regarded as the most audacious and successful of the water diversion projects. In 1952, the late chairman proposed the diversion project with the goal of alleviating chronic water scarcity in the cities of Beijing and Tianjin, as well as in the northern provinces of Hebei, Henan, and Shandong. It is predicted that the South North Water Transfer Project will cost more than $80 billion to complete. This indicates that it is a major effort. It has required the building of enormous canals and pipelines, in addition to the establishment of water treatment facilities, pumping stations, and storage reservoirs. The project also includes the transportation of water over considerable distances, which poses significant technical challenges. These challenges include preserving the water's quality, ensuring that water is delivered effectively, and reducing the amount of water that is lost as a result of evaporation and seepage. After it is completed, the South North Water Transfer Project will be a massive waterwork system that will connect four major rivers in China, the Yangtze, Yellow, Huei, and Hei rivers, and divert water along three distinct routes, the Eastern, the Middle, and the Western routes, which together will span more than 1,400 kilometers in length. The Eastern route is the largest and most advanced of the three routes, having begun operations in 2013. It has the potential to transfer up to 9.5 billion cubic meters of water annually and is the largest of the three routes. Through the 1,800-kilometer-long historic Hangzhou to Beijing Canal, the eastern route will deliver water from the Yangtze River's lower reaches to the provinces of Jiangsu, Anhui, Shandong, and Hebei, as well as the city of Tianjin, which dates back to the 7th century A. The quantity of water that is expected to be delivered by it should be sufficient to meet the requirements for water that are imposed by the agricultural and industrial sectors in each of these regions. In addition, because there will be more water moving through the canal, it will be possible to navigate it during the entire year. The capacity of the middle route is 5.2 billion cubic meters per year, and it commenced operations in 2014 with the intention of transferring water from the Yellow River Basin to the Yangtze River the water from the Danjiangku Reservoir on the Han River, which is a tributary of the Yangtze River, will be transported via the middle route to locations in Hubei, Henan, and Hebei. These areas include more than a dozen cities, including Beijing and Tianjin. Because of the way the path is laid out, water may flow all the way from where it begins its journey to where it ends up using only the force of gravity. The Danjiangku Dam's storage capacity needed to be increased and as a result, its height needed to be increased from its initial 157 meters to its current 170 meters. This presented a significant engineering problem. It will be a spectacular display of China's engineering expertise when the eastern and central routes both go beneath the Yellow River as planned. The western route, which has a capacity of 13.8 billion cubic meters per year, is currently under development and will convey water from the higher levels of the Yangtze River to the Yellow River Basin. The Western Path possesses an astonishingly audacious goal. On the Qinghai Tibet Plateau, where nearly one-third of China's water resources are concentrated, it is planned to tap three Yangtze tributaries, the Tongchen, Yelong, and Dadu rivers, and transport water nearly 500 kilometers through the Baankala mountain range to northwest China where it will help replenish the Yellow River to irrigate millions of hectares in western China. 
This will take place at elevations ranging from 10,000 to more than 16,000 feet above sea level. The majority of the project's individual tasks have already been completed. Work on important projects in the Central Canal has also advanced, starting with increasing the height of the Danjiangku Dam, which was one of the first steps in this endeavor. The completion of the canal will come as a significant relief to Beijing, which is now experiencing a severe water shortage. It is anticipated that 1 billion cubic meters of water will be supplied to Beijing annually as a result of the diversion. The construction of a multi-purpose dam on the Han River, the construction of the Trump Channel in Henan, and the construction of a waterway connecting Nancy and Dongping Lakes, which are Shandong Province's two largest freshwater lakes, are other significant projects that are advancing the Central Canal. The western portion of the project has not yet entered the construction stage. Despite the fact that the technical evaluations have been finished, no start date has been given and completion is not anticipated until the year 2050 at the earliest. In spite of the fact that it has lofty objectives, the South North Water Transfer Project has generated a great deal of controversy due to the fact that its detractors have voiced worries regarding the environmental damage, social dislocation, and high expense of the project. Since the construction of the canals and pipelines resulted in the displacement of local towns and the loss of their houses and farmland, the people in those communities were forced to relocate. Concerns have also been raised regarding the project's possible adverse effects on the environment, including the possibility of polluting water supplies and upsetting the delicate balance of ecosystems in the area. In addition, the exorbitant expense of the project has led to concerns regarding its long-term viability as well as the return on investment that it will provide for the Chinese government and the Chinese people. However, proponents of the project claim that it is essential to address the severe water scarcity in northern China and to assure the continued economic and social development of the country as a whole in order to guarantee the project's success. They point out that the northern part of China is one of the driest locations in the country and that the lack of water has significant repercussions for agriculture, industry, and residential use. They also say that the project will assist to solve the unequal distribution of water resources between the northern and southern regions of China and will help to lessen the number of conflicts that are caused by water issues throughout the country. The South North Water Transfer Project is facing tremendous problems on the political and social fronts in addition to the technical and environmental obstacles it currently faces. The project has been criticized for not having sufficient levels of transparency and public input, in addition to having the potential to increase existing regional tensions and disputes between northern and southern China. In addition, there are worries regarding the long-term viability of the project, as well as the possibility of water shortages in the future, because the demand for water in northern China is expected to continue to rise. In conclusion, the South North Water Transfer Project is a massive and ambitious project that is aimed at addressing water scarcity in northern China. Despite its controversies, it is a testament to China's determination to overcome its water challenges and ensure sustainable development for its people. Thank you for watching. We hope you found this video informative. Share your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos on fascinating engineering projects.